Let's take a look at how the market reacted to SAB Miller's numbers. Levan Gopal is uh, from 2080 Capital. Levan, thank you so much for joining us. Just looking at SAB Miller's stock, I mean, it was up six tenths of percent today. And, you know, I mean, there's so many moving parts to the company, so many different markets. I mean, just in Africa, you're looking at, I think it was lager volumes up 4%. Tanzania, a standout on the quarter, a very small part of the overall picture, but volumes there down 13%. Uh, what stood out for you? Well, let's uh, start off by saying there's been a lot of talk about China. Uh, China only contributes 2% to the bottom line. So for now, it's a growth market, and I know there's a fair amount of investment that the group's making in China. But uh, what many analysts had been hoping for was a bigger set of numbers. Uh, and where they fell short was the fact that SAB had been growing by way of acquisition for the last few years. This was one of the first set of results, or, or the first trading update at least, that is without a massive acquisition. Mm -hmm. And it really is a question of organic growth. So a lot of the acquisitions all over the years have now got to settle in place and the links between them are becoming, uh, becoming a reality. Uh, so I, th I think the enthusiasm that analysts had might have been misplaced because they were judging it by the, uh, the sort of gusto that we've seen over the last few years. SAB today being a very volatile stock, it was down about 2% this morning mm. uh, in London and South Africa, and then managed to claw its way back to half percent again. And I think that's because a number of analysts started to realize uh, that the, ag the organic growth is, is something that they need to come to terms with and uh, it wasn't as bad a set of numbers uh, as, as uh, on first glance. D Julian Wenzel pointing out that snow, uh, snow in China is in fact the world's largest beer brand as it stands right now and I mean caught they got in JV with snow so huge potential there especially in light of the fact that we've seen China's wages increasing and of course the ability to pass on prices uh, will increase for SAB Miller. I think there will be uh, quite a few synergies coming out of China certainly for now it's a question of capturing market share uh, it's also a question of trying to eke out a profit uh, in China beer has got a very low base price uh, so it, uh, it is a question of working within the dynamics of, of that region. Once uh, they uh, have a larger footprint, uh, let's assume uh, earnings have started to increase, then I think it'll start making a meaningful contribution to the bottom line mm -hmm. of SAB. Ellie's comes out with the uh, earnings today and uh, looking at first half hips, 102% jump there in the small cap stock uh, earnings and a stellar performance really coming through from consumer goods division. It's a company also focused on sustainability, very much focused on uh, their eco footprint and looking at uh, kind of into the 20 year, 30 year view. Uh, so, so your thoughts on the investment case now for Ellie's? Let me say they've given us a trading update about a month ago, uh, sort of a caution to say that earnings may be as much as 110 percent. So <laughs> a number of investors looking at that uh, trading update and buying the stock in the last month and a half. Uh, what you have noticed is Ellie's is now uh, a company that has a very different structure from uh, what we remember a few years ago. They were a supplier of a variety of electrical goods. Now they've included DSTV installation. They've included a very big JV with ESCOM uh, and the green uh, footprint that you talk about mm -hmm. is becoming a bigger feature of their business. There's also a fair amount of cross-border income. Uh, they have a presence in six different uh, countries uh, in and around South Africa. Uh, so that is a very good mix of foreign income uh, spread over a few different sectors um, as well as a uh, country mix. I think that the forecasts for the next six months are probably as good uh, simply because of the switch on to uh, a greener type of energy. So I think uh, the case for Ellie's is still a buy. Interesting uh, that uh, when it comes to the overall economy, a, a positive indicator coming through from the South African Reserve Bank today. They start their three-day monetary policy meeting and that leading indicator up 1.2% year in year and on a month-on-month -month basis up 0.8%. Uh, and, uh, you know, pointing out there that it has been positive, in fact, for uh, five straight months. So 
a good signal when it comes to South Africa. It certainly is a good signal. Bear in mind uh, the Reserve Bank has abandoned inflation targeting some quarters back. Uh, you've also got an outlook now that has to take account of uh, inflation because of ESCOM, has got to take account of inflation because of a weaker currency and a much higher petrol price. Uh, so even though they've abandoned inflation targeting, it's probably wise uh, given the fact that there can be some inflation creep, uh, it would seem that whilst everything looks rosy now and it appears to be a flat liner, a number of economists are probably looking at uh, six months down the road to mm -hmm. see uh, if there's going to be any uh, speed bumps on that road. Yeah, uh, very quickly, Glencore Strata, green light there. Is this a game changer in South Africa? Because we don't talk about them because they're not listed here. Uh, in terms of both companies, uh, it's, a, it's a big plus. Uh, remember, this is a uh, corporate action that's uh, uh, held the news headlines for some time. Uh, it is a very healthy signal from the South African Competitions Authority. Bear in mind, other uh, jurisdictions have already given it the thumbs up. Uh, and in terms of South Africans playing Glencore or Extrata uh, by way of the JSC platform uh, for international derivatives, uh, we can buy you a single stock future over either one.